I wonder a lot how to navigate grief. It's something that I'm still learning about. Um, I've heard it described like a house on fire, you know, and some days it's the, the flames, you can't get away from it, and some days there's just a bit of smoldering at some point. And the greatest lesson in the world is impermanence. Everything passes, everything moves, nothing stays solid, nothing stays. We have deaths in our life all the time. We, we lose jobs, we lose friends, we, uh, we lose dreams, you know, and, and there's a grieving. Grief is a real human emotion. It's a, I think it's the most human emotion. It's really tender and raw. I think grief is precious. Give me a wee minute. Um, our son Lockie died 11 years ago in seven months. Still makes me cry. <laughs> when your child dies first, it just seems wrong. Everything. Everything you've ever thought of or thought about just seems wrong. I didn't expect to get this emotional. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't think I was very prepared at all for losing my mum. You know, I hadn't, wasn't prepared for how much of a kind of body hit it was and how physical and it was, and that how much of an identity shift. Antonia was my American wife who, who died of cancer. <laughs> Still touching that one. <laughs> Many of us who've lost someone have never fully grieved it. So I think there's a whole population of people walking around with unprocessed grief. Well, I compartmentalized my grief because I was just so used to being the person who held everything together. And it turned out that that wasn't such a great idea to do that. I knew that I needed to grieve from my heart, not just from my head. You've got to get your feelings externalised. You've got to let it go. You don't bottle it up. You can't afford to bottle it up because it strangles you. If we're afraid to touch into that grief, that's a real disconnect from nature and a disconnect from our humanity, I think. There are stages to it that we move through when we grieve something or we have a loss. For me, in the past, if I was in grief, I would be disappointed that I was still feeling this. Oh, I should be over this by now. People do want to expedite it. They do want to move it along and say, oh, the, well, they've been dead a year. You should stop talking about them now. <laughs> or, yeah, you should smile, you know, cheer up, be happy. And, and actually, when a death is sudden, there is, there's no graceful way to do it. I mean, it just rips a hole in your whole world. I feel that that actually could go on for quite a while. 
and that there's, there's no way to expedite that process. Grieving isn't like a cold. You don't take some vitamin C and get over it. It's, um, it evolves. It evolves from that um, like really intense grief that you think you won't ever survive into more of a mourning, into a, um, a way of life, really. The pain is always there. It's just that you've learned to live with it. Grief is a bit like going into the ocean. You know, when you first walk in, you're continually hit by the waves and they're just breaking over your head all the time and knocking you down. But you've got to get past the breakers. Once you're past the breakers, you still get the waves going over your head. It's still, still difficult, but you start to learn the pattern of the waves and you start to learn the rhythms. You know, eventually you do learn to swim. And sometimes there'll be storms come up, but you'll be okay. Things are always going to happen. Sunny today, this afternoon, we might have thunder and lightning and rain. You have to recognise that there is a dark side, there is a sad side, there's an unfortunate side. You accept them for what they are and you learn to live around them, inside them, outside of them. However it happens, you learn to live. It's really hard to accept that though, the fact that it will get better, you'll get past the breakers and you'll feel okay again. And that kind of made me feel guilty for a while. That kind of made me feel like I was forgetting my mum and not missing her as much. And then someone else said to me that it's not that you lose, forget the pain, it's not that you've stopped grieving, it's just that another ring's grown round it. You know, the pain doesn't go away, the grief doesn't go away, but you continue to grow around it. The bereavement process is a living thing. It's hugely human. It affects every cell of our being. There's a tsunami that's run through your life and you're still um, picking up the pieces and everything is changed forever. And um, I think that that takes tremendous care and compassion and empathy and self-knowing too. Don't give up. Never give up on each other and your life. Because it's the, it's the biggest thing that's helped Sue and I through everything. You actually have to trust. You have to trust yourself and you have to trust those around you. You have to trust the journey. Mostly you just have to keep breathing and eventually an understanding will come and a new normal kind of develops. You have to go through an amount of suffering and I think if you go through that suffering without short-circuiting it, if you can honestly get through it, I think you grow just a little bit. And, and, and your eyes widen and you maybe you see the world a little bit different each time. Everything that we do is imbued with our, our losses and everything we do is enhanced and made more beautiful by our losses. You see much more beauty in the world after than you did before. The clouds in the sky, the sun when it shines, everything is beautiful. Everything.
thanks for watching this film. All the stories we've made over the last two years have only been possible because of the support that we've received from our patrons on Patreon. So if you'd like to help us keep these stories coming, then check out our Green Renaissance page in the link below. Thanks a lot. Can we take a kiss?